The project of the Helix will now begin. Let's go. Well, hello. <coughs> hello again, and welcome back to Ruby the Elite. Hey, Pizza Pointer. Hello to you, too. Well, we're back, continuing on this book number two of our Honda Helix. And I think there's going to be quite a few books <laughs> by the looks of things. We're going to continue today, though, with taking out the fuel tank. We need to get it out. We've got all kinds of rust. And whatever else has been causing our pain here, quite a bit of moisture, it seems like. I hope there's not a leak in the tank, but we will find out. But in order to get it out, we have to start by removing some bolts. As you can see, they are right here as we go through the spider-infested webs there. We've got a total of four that are holding the tank down. And you can see the last one was kind of hard. You can see it right there. Perfect. Bullseye pizza pointer. Let's get those four bolts out and continue on. Keep in mind when you go to remove the gas tank, you're going to need wrenches, sockets, whatever's going to fit. I've already noticed that I have to uh, use a few different types. So just make sure you got plenty of metric tools. All right, I'm looking for a 10. Uh, no, 11. And there we go, our 10. And that's the one that's going to fit. This one's pretty tight. Some of them are pretty tight, and that's just because they've never been removed. Let's take off this gasoline overflow preventer. And we see more poop. I can't go anywhere on this bike without finding poop. All right, look what we got here. Definitely not Honda clamps. They wouldn't have used two different kinds, and this is not the fuel filter that came with the bike. I'll show you the right one compared to it. This has got to come off though first. These side turn needle nose have came in handy so many times. Not sure the name of them, but we also need to use a screwdriver to get this clamp off. And as you can see, the OEM one on the left is much different than what was on the bike. These tubes, I think we're going to replace these as well, just to make sure we got all new on there. We next have to remove the right water pipe from the frame that will allow us to get the tank to move outwards in this direction. So we got one bolt right here and then we also have one, actually a nut, right there. Once we remove both of those, it will allow us some room to remove the tank. Be very careful though when you're pulling on this because it has hoses that are connected to each side. All right, we'll go ahead and disconnect the vacuum line. Now we have to remove the fuel sending unit. We'll have to disconnect it first on the other side. And right here we have the plug. And once I disengage this, I'll just have to pull it on through so that we can get the tank out. Just makes it easier by doing it this way than trying to just force it. Now that I have it all the way through, there you go. Just in case if you're not aware, there is a drain bolt on the underside of the helix for the gas tank. This makes it incredibly easy to winterize the bike. Loosen that bolt, get all the old gas out, add some fresh gas along with a stabilizer, non-ethanol if you can find it. It just makes starting so much easier in the spring. 
I pulled the bars out just a little more and that is going to allow me to finally get the tank out and look at the wet what is that wet it's not gas it's on the tank as well it's coolant folks now we have another issue that we need to tackle where is the coolant leak and you can see it's been leaking for a while well you fix one issue and you find another. It came from somewhere. Let's find where it came from. Well, we'll do that in a moment. Let's take a little closer look at this tank. You can see, oh yeah, there's a lot of rust on the inside. Now that we have the tank out, we'll be able to treat all of this rust. It's all surface. That, look at how nasty that is. The sending unit has got... I don't know, poop and stuff all over it. You can see the service rust all over the tank. Inside the tank, outside the tank. You know, you can buy another one from Honda. It's 300 bucks, though. I'm not spending 300 on a tank. I will make this one look great. Gotta save some pennies here and there. Let's first take this sending unit out just by using a screwdriver a few taps and we'll loosen that ring and then once you loosen it the ring will pop off just slide it through and it's actually stuck on there use a screwdriver here just a little bit of prying we should be able to loosen it up enough to Usually there's nothing holding this on at this point. It's just a matter of pulling the whole thing up. we got to get the float out of there. You just move it a certain direction and we'll have to turn it a little bit. I think I can't see. Oh, it goes this way. And there you go. The float comes out. And now we can see, ooh, more poop. I wonder how many times in these videos I'm going to say the word poop. Feces, poop. We'll get it all around the ring. Clean it all up. I'm just trying to keep the poop, poop, out of the tank. So I put this rag in there temporarily. I'm just going to use some of these cotton swabs to get as much of that nastiness out of there. And if you're wondering what I'm cleaning with, this is your best buddy. This Simply Green Heavy Duty Degreaser. This is not the green stuff, folks. This is the purple stuff. This is safe on metal. There is a difference. Read your other Simply Green bottle. And it tells you specifically on there to not use on metals. Where this one, perfectly fine. It's a great liquid to use do a little bit of wiping and see how much of that coolant we can get off of there and then we're gonna have to start looking around at where it came from I mean it, there's gotta be a logical place it's not coming from the side I saw a bit on the gas tank as well. We'll keep hunting. We'll find it. I looked at my parts bin from the past. I keep everything, folks. Another jewel. Look at that. Brand spanking new. I'm not sure what bike I ordered it for, but Honda uses the same part on all the bikes. And it'll be beautiful after a paint job. As you can see on the sides, I did start sanding it down to beautification, but we're more interested on the inside of the tank right now. What are we going to use? How about some vinegar, some salt, and some potatoes? Well, 
No, just the vinegar. We are going to fill up the tank, about four gallons of it. Oh, a little bit of drip in there. No matter, because we are going to repaint it anyway. All right, just as I typed, let's let it cook. We're going to let it simmer there for a couple days, 48 hours, and then we'll come back and we'll clean the whole inside out. I mentioned this in the first video. I was going to buy the rodent tape and it arrived. That's the part number if you're interested. $48 for a roll of tape. But we are going to wrap it around all the stuff that needs to have the rodent tape here on my original fixes. We'll wrap it all up in case they get hungry again. Got to get my tripod going again here. It makes it so much easier when you got two hands to work with. But here is the rodent tape. Look at the little mice all over this doesn't smell like peppers but I guess it tastes like them and here's some of my handiwork already all taped up ready for the rodents let's take a look under here a sneak peek ooh yes look at that it does not look like anything I want on my chips Utilizing the baking soda and some water, the baking soda neutralizes the acid. And look at how nice it looks compared to the way it did. All the rust is gone. Once I dried it all out in there, I added in my WD-40. I know some of you might not like that idea, but I've never had any issues. I've done multiple tanks, and it stops the flash rusting. I use WD-40, I guess you use what you like, but this has always worked for me. I think I've done it, I want to say on seven or eight tanks now, and it's always worked out for me. So I started beautifying, as you can see right here, and I started doing some investigating. Okay, well it must have dropped from this bar. Here you go, you can see it. I didn't realize that it was all chewed up and as you move it around the coolant is coming right out of it. That line goes all the way up here right next to the cap and then goes all the way to the back of the bike to the carburetor. It's called a carburetor heater tube is the proper name. It's got to be replaced. Let's look into the past. You can see it right there in my last video. It's been like that the whole time. It wasn't something I did as soon as I took that centerpiece off. You can tell where the problem was. Right next to the poop. I utilize Honda Parts Nation for all my part numbers. It also helps just breaking down whatever you're looking at. This is the radiator for the 99 Helix. All those numbers are different parts that at one point in time you could buy. Well, Honda doesn't keep them in stock anymore. I need a number 15, which is a 3.5 times 1474 millimeter hose. Well, I can't buy it from Honda, but at least now I know the size of it and I could source it from somebody else. This is the full breakdown showing you what the radiator page looks like. All right, well, I guess next we're going to do a coolant flush. I hadn't planned on doing this yet, but since we have the leak, I want to get that line off the bike and have it replaced. And then we'll go ahead and install some fresh coolant later. But let's first take off the radiator cap. I can't imagine we're going to find anything here. It's always tight when they've never removed it in 25 years, at least for this bike, 25 years. And you can see there's nothing there. There's also nothing in the reserve tank. There's supposed to be about just under half of a quart, and it's bone dry. The total amount in the system is just under 2 U.S. quarts, or 1.82 liters. 
and uh, just under a quart and a half is in the radiator in the engine. So what we're gonna get out of this once we use our eight millimeter wrench to loosen this up and drain it out, I'm not real sure, but there's probably less than what I just quoted. It's kind of a sludge yellow brown coming out of it. Make sure you also put a brand new crush washer on this when you tighten it. Buy a kit. I'll share that kit with you later on. I think there's a part number on it. You will utilize it many times. I have. But we're going to let this all leak out slowly. I never did show you the rusty colored nice vinegar that came out of the gas tank. Add that to your potato chips. A little extra iron in your diet. All right, we got it. Now we have it. It's starting to drip. Let's put some distilled water though through it. Let's get it all nice and clean. We'll add it down into the funnel until the water starts coming out instead of the sludge. When it's a nice crystal clear color, we got it flushed out. I put the distilled water into a smaller water bottle just to make it easier to pour into the system. Of course, I don't have the right funnel. I can't find my funnel, but we'll continue to utilize what we have. Hey, pizza pointer, wake up. People are watching. Take a nap. All right, look at this. We got it coming out, and it's starting to look clear. Much nicer than what it was, not the brown ooze. We'll continue to send it on through until it's crystal clear, and that way we know it's all flushed. Now that we're done with that, let's start to remove the carburetor heater tube. And what are we replacing it with? A much, much nicer, bigger circumference. More insulated. Just better all around product than what was in there. Keep in mind, this is not fuel line. It's made for high temperature. And... Utilize a nice kit like this, put better clamps in than what Honda did. Try to do better for your bike, not worse. We'll continue to pull all of the old tubing out. And as you can see, it's, it's in there pretty tight. So when you go to put the new tubing in, be patient because it's going to be a snug fit. But I couldn't have estimated better. Look all the way through right up to the carburetor. What a perfect length. Couldn't have, couldn't have guessed better. Finally, no more leaks. Well, if you've stayed with me this long, then you deserve to hear the day I bought the bike. You know, as I'm cleaning this up, I'll just go over pretty quickly the cliff notes version of what happened if you watched any of my old videos and you're one of the guys who've been around a while you know that I've been looking for a helix for a long time and I found a elite 250 I found a Morphus I found blah I find this find that but I never found a helix so all of a sudden one day out of nowhere I decided to you know look in Craigslist which I don't usually look in just seems like every time I find a bike it's usually in Facebook marketplace at least the ones that I want to buy I'm not looking for completely run down scooters that I got to go all the way down to the frame and redo everything I'm not looking to do that I'm looking to have some work put in like like you've seen in my videos but not a complete utter restoration from nothing it just doesn't interest me so I find this bike and I'm like wow it's the first day of the sale I was excited. I told my son, let's go. Let's take a ride. So it was about 15 miles away. We arrived at this complex of old, not old, but big outbuildings. Big, huge buildings that you'd put farm equipment in or, you know, heavy equipment in with these garage doors, just monster garage doors. So we drive through this complex and we find the big building that is where the bike is. We arrive and I'm like, okay, are you the owner? He's like, well, no, I'm not. I'm just a hired hand. The owner, he had liquidated. He got rid of everything. He decided to retire. 
and he just wants to get everything sold. And outside the building, there's an RX-7. I'm like, it still had the tag on it. It still had the window tag on it, the window sticker. And he's like, I'm like, is that for sale? He's like, no, we just sold it. You missed that ad. I was like, God, that would have been a great car to buy. I said, what else did he have? He goes, well, all kinds of stuff, really, but I wasn't really here for that sale. It's just I was the one who was here for anything that had a motor in it, and it had to get fixed, and this is one of the things that I had to work on. I said, well, what do you mean work on? What's wrong with it? Uh, he said, well, it's got only 400 and some miles on it. But what happened is the owner had bought it in 99 and rode it around the complex and then decided he wasn't going to, you know, use it anymore, I guess. And he just left it in the corner. I said, really? He goes, well, that's not true. He, he did try to ride it but couldn't start it. And then it got left in the corner for 20 years. I said, yeah, usually that's the story. I went back to what he had said, and I said, what did you do to get it running? He goes, well, I put a new carburetor in it, and I'm like, okay, what was wrong with the old one? He said, ah, it just, it was gummed up from old gas, and honestly, it's not my bike, so I just wanted to get the bike running, and the easiest way was to replace the carburetor. He goes, it runs great, though. I'm like, oh, boy, here we go. I said, do you still have the old carburetor? He's like, no, I, I ended up just throwing it away. I figured this would be an easy replacement, and what's wrong with that? And I went on to say, well, you ended up throwing a carburetor out worth hundreds of dollars to put a $30 carburetor in it. He goes, yeah, but honestly, it's it wasn't mine to really care about. I just had to get it running. And most people probably wouldn't ask these questions. I said, well, anybody who has sense and is buying something like this 25 years old should ask these questions he didn't get irritated with me saying that but it's very true you know i'm there to buy this bike that i'm going to put my life on and what would you do to get it running so he went on and say he didn't really do much else just gave it a quick wash and here it is i didn't have much more information than that other than he replaced the carburetor didn't have the old carburetor it got rid of it he had a service manual for it. It looked kind of decent from the pictures. It looked pretty good in person, too. It needed, a, of course, a better wash than what was, you know, done to it. But I said, you know, you're asking $2,500. He's like, yeah. I said, I'll give you $2,000. He's like, well, what? why? And I said, well, you might have got it running, but it's still going to need an oil change. It's still going to need, you know, the coolant change, the air filter, new battery, all this. I went on and on. I said, just because you got it running doesn't mean that it's running really optimally. It needs to have things done to it. It's going to cost me $500 and all the things that the guy didn't do, the previous owner didn't do. I said, it's only fair that, you know, if you want me to buy it, I'm going to put it in a good home and I'm going to take care of it the way it should have been. And the guy kind of, <laughs> he kind of snickered and said, okay. Well, he said the lowest he'd take would be 2000 I said, I got it right here and I bought the bike. And I put my son on it on the way home, and he, as he rode it, he's like, Dad, you know, it, it, it's making some flickering. And, you know, he signaled to me, and we pulled over. And I'm like, oh, we'll talk about it when we get to the house. So we get to the house, and he's, he says, you know, the, 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 everything's flashing on the dash. I was like, I'm actually getting afraid to ride it. I said, did it hesitate or anything? He's like, no, it's just everything was flickering. And that's kind of where we get into what happened so that's the scooter story we'll talk more about it though as videos go on but we're all cleaned up for today mm -hmm.